Hello, thank you for joining us recording from GitHub Universe 2024, 10th year anniversary edition. And this year the GitHub podcast is bigger and better. And we have had some incredible guests, but friends, I'm bringing you the ultimate guest. Thrilled, delighted, and humbled that she accepted the invitation to come and join us. My guest today is Dimitris Shiram. She is chief of staff for the CEO of GitHub. She acts as the CEO trusted partner to move all of software development forward. Dimitris is particularly passionate about the evolving nature of open source in the age of AI. Dimitris, welcome to GitHub Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. No, Andrea, I have to say it is I who is just humble and delighted to be able to have the opportunity to sit at this table with you. The excitement in the room, listening to the keynotes yesterday and today, the world is a buzz. People are so excited. We are leading the charge and AI is truly reshaping the software development landscape. I wonder, of course, the position where you see it and the executive leadership, from your point of view, how is GitHub strategically positioning itself to continue to lead this transformation and empower the next generation of developers. Yeah, I think it all started earlier this year when we set a winning aspiration to have 1 billion developers on this planet. And that is 10% of the world's current population wow. right now. And so the only way you can do that is to continue to lead and mm. to continue to innovate. What's being created right now today is not enough. And that's always what's pushing us forward. So whenever we're thinking about new products or features, we're thinking about what makes developers happy, what could also make them have a much more seamless developer experience. Mm -hmm. But we're also asking ourselves, does this get cl us closer to our winning aspiration? It actually forces us to have to constantly innovate and just thinking about how we can bring this to the world's population. Why that goal? First of all, I loved it when I remember when this aspirational goal was set and I get that it's going to propel us into being even more innovative and leading the charge further. But why specifically 1 billion developers and why is that so important to us as a company and to you? Yeah, I think the, the main thing that we were thinking about is in the next generation of developers. And oftentimes that conversation starts at that college age, whether they're in college or not. Sometimes it dips down into high school. Mm -hmm. We recognize that the education of our youngest, those that are in kindergarten and in pre-K, they're actually being born right now almost as developers. Is this like true? you can find the one-year-old or the two-year-old that knows how to work their iPhone. We're talking about Minecraft, yep. Roblox. That's development. And mm -hmm. so we're asking them to be the consumers but what if we shifted that paradigm and make them the creators? So if we can reach down and infuse this as part of the learning of everyone, which is why we're focused on natural language mm -hmm. and making sure that even if English is not your first language, that you can still participate in the developer ecosystem. That's where that billion aspiration comes from. We're thinking about how can we reach folks even earlier as soon as they're able to touch an iPhone or touch whatever it is, Roblox or Minecraft. I love it. I think that's one of the key things, increasing that access, yeah. breaking down barriers mm -hmm. for coding education, creating this more diverse, inclusive developer community. What's GitHub thinking in terms of key initiatives to make sure that we're able to do those things and get to that 1 billion developers? Mm -hmm. Lowering barriers so that more and more people can cross that line into what is a developer mm -hmm. so that they can innovate and do some of the things that we do as developers. And so the very first thing we did was make sure that we introduced the ability to participate using Copilot, using natural language. And you mm -hmm. saw that in the keynotes, right? You had one of the speakers inputting it in Spanish, uh, in Hindi, yeah. just having it be natural language and then moving towards conversational coding. That was where we really started lowering the barrier. And of course, Spark, where you can create an app using just a prompt. And Spark is the next wave of it so that anybody where you're the age of 12 or 13, like my 13 year old daughter, or you're my 73 year old mom uh -huh. that you can now participate. So I can't wait to get Spark into the hands of my mom. Oh, I love I go it. Home to see what she can come up with. I, I love that we're so in tune with making sure that we are inclusive of a yeah. global audience. We're a global company. Open source is global technology yeah. that permeates every aspect of what we ship. Thomas said on the slide that open source is the world's largest team sport. Yes. 
oftentimes there's so many industries designed to keep people out. Mm -hmm. Because there's a finite amount of work that needs to be done and you have to be exclusive. Open source is the complete opposite of that. We are only better with the more people that yes. can come in. That's where all the innovation and all the creativity, the diversity of thoughts and experiences, that's what makes the, the, the greatest, largest team sport. Mm -hmm. The more people we get in, the better open source is. And there's not many industries that can say that. I love what you just said about getting in the hands of someone, regardless yeah, of their age. Right. That augmentation of the human ability, to me, is just poetry. Think about getting into the hands of people that felt that, that this world was closed off to oh. them. It's going to create that spark in their eyes. With Spark and, of course, GitHub Copilot, this vision of helping developers get skills quicker, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not just about having a tool that's going to create this for you, but yeah. you're also skilling up. What innovations are on the horizon? We saw a lot yesterday already, but what else can you share about what GitHub is positioning to make sure that developers continue to upskill? Mm -hmm. Did you see Sandbox today? We had someone from um, GitHub Next that actually previewed what they're thinking about and what they're working on, and yeah. it's called GitHub Sandbox. Okay. And basically, that's a personalized tool to meet you where you are and give you very individualized learning path to what? understand the skills that you want to learn as a developer. And so you can literally put in, I'm interested in learning this language or whatever, whether it's JavaScript, Python. They'll ask you some questions. What is your skill level? And you slide the slider where it is. Mm -hmm. And based on where you are, it gives you learning paths and documentation as well as giving you these things where you can test out different codes and all these things. You have to check... Check out the demo from yes. Sage 2. And so Sandbox is the wave of upskilling. So Spark gets them interested and lets them know that you can actually be a developer. That's the easiest part. And then once you get that excitement about mm -hmm. being a developer, you're then going to head over to Sandbox and say, okay, I really want to learn the code behind it and the skills and all those things. Mm -hmm. We want to meet people where they are all in the name of growing this open source ecosystem, all in the name of getting to that 1 billion developers on this planet. That is amazing. I cannot wait to check out that demo. We have such an incredible, ambitious vision for 2030, right? And I just heard two things that I feel like are key to making us get to that yes. vision, of course, but we wouldn't be able to accomplish so much without our partners. Oh yeah. Educational institutions, the governments that we work with together to create this supportive ecosystem for all developers yeah. to grow. Uh, what's GitHub stand there? What are we doing in the next, wow, how many years until 2030? Not that many. Oh, not a lot at oh, all. Wow. Not a lot at all. And my 13-year-old daughter, she's the high school class of 2029, so it's coming too fast for oh, me boy. right now. So slow down, world. But you'll also hear in the day two keynote when you check it out, Kyle Daigle, our COO, actually introduced as well as reported on such as how corporate sponsors, GitHub sponsors, yes. the amazing um, corporations that are supporting financially to do that. We actually entered into a partnership with Hat Club, which is a hat club organizations all around the world. I love Hat Club. Uh, yeah, Hat Club. Yes. And so we actually have, I think, a million dollars in the fund that corporations and individuals can give to them to do some of the amazing work that they're doing. I think we hit 7 million students as part of our education program this year. And I think it was 212,000 professionals professors, wow. over 27,000 institutions. These are all colleges, but not just learning on GitHub, mm -hmm. but also the way we partner with them. There are a lot of people who really care about open source mm -hmm. and lowering those barriers to entry into open source. And they're constantly utilizing the GitHub platform and different tweaks and features that we can do to lower the barriers even on our platform. So oftentimes I'm in the LT meeting and they'll be talking about something that they wish they could do. And I'm like, hey, this actual PhD student wrote a thesis paper on this exact thing that, is that has the right. And I want to do more of that because the more I talk to these um, students and these universities that's doing this research, they're oftentimes say we have this amazing research. We don't know who to give it to at GitHub. Oh. And so there's some magic that's going to be there. I think that we can have a stronger partnership, yes. not just universities and students being the recipients of our tools, 
But we know open source team sport is like a big circle and a big continuum. The only way that we can get to those billion developers is we have to pull in all of those stakeholders. And so I love that. I love that you've seen that actually in action, like a solution for a problem that we're talking at a level of a company such as GitHub. And you've seen it and you know that there's already tech talent out there that has figured it out. Right. We did this because we know that it can help improve the experience of so many folks on the platform. Platform. Yeah. They've spent two and three years building this uh-huh. research and data. How do I now create a way for GitHub to actually be in partnership with those folks? Amazing opportunities. I love that. If you're in academia and you're in research and you're watching this and you're thinking, wow, I never thought that I could actually do this yes. at GitHub and bring my idea. This is the time. Yes, please <laughs> like, do. This please is the do. time. There is a lot of things that we're doing in terms of our product, the initiatives, the partnerships. Mm-hmm. All of this work so important. Part of this work also means meeting developers where they are, right? Mm -hmm. And this year, I am delighted to share with you that you are going to be meeting developers where they are in Johannesburg, South Africa. I want to know why GitHub is coming to Africa and how does this reflect on our broader strategy, just emphasizing our exponential global impact and how we can really serve developers everywhere. We're excited to be in South Africa, right? The continent of Africa, how can you do anything? How can you reach any big audacious goal, all roads lead through Africa, Uh plain and simple. And so this might be Thomas's first visit to the continent as CEO, but it can't be his last Mm. visit. And so we just started looking at where do we have some of the most excited tech talent across the world And so Africa was the continent that we chose to just double down and start with. Two of our amazing GitHub stars, Ruth and Samson, are there. We want to make sure that we elevate who they are and the amazing work that they're doing. So I'm so delighted at Constellation. I'll be moderating a panel with the two of them. And so that's what we're really excited about is just making sure that we meet people where they are. And so... This is just the beginning of it. We're meeting with developers. We're meeting mm-hmm. with communities. We're meeting with startups. We're meeting with a university oh, that's yeah. over there. We're doing social impact and volunteer activities. And we are so eager to learn more and learn how we can do more at GitHub mm-hmm. to just really make sure that we are elevating the continent and all those amazing uh, future and current developers in Africa. And so we can't wait. So if you're in South Africa, please, please join Join us at Constellation, and I can't wait to meet all of you. I am so excited, and I'm humble and grateful for the trust. Folks, how intentional and thoughtful our executive leadership team is being about this visit, and how this is our community open source, and bringing resources, and sparking the spark. I'm going to use that all yes. the time. And just being able to have that opportunity to come to you is honestly just an unbelievable privilege. And so we're going to do everything we can to just put on an amazing event for you. I know we're doing so much and also Asia and Latam. There are some of the fastest open source growing yes. communities in the world and it's only going to get bigger and better. How can people find you on social? I'll be sure to add these links, but where would you like folks to contact you? You can go to me on Twitter, which is DW Cheatham. You can Find me on LinkedIn, which is Demetrius Cheatham, DW Cheatham as well. And my email address is Demetrius11 at GitHub.com. I will get back to you if I'm not traveling somewhere, yes. but the team knows that anybody that says that they've heard me somewhere or seen me somewhere, I always prioritize returning the, the message. And so welcome your feedback. Welcome anything that sparked a thought for something that GitHub can be doing. I welcome all of that. And so thank you so much. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you. Anytime. And thank you all for joining. Don't forget, go ahead and follow Demetrius on LinkedIn. And if this sparked your curiosity, ideas, and you want to be part of this amazing adventure getting to 1 billion developers, reach out. Thank you.